Hey everyone, and welcome to the channel for another Escape from Tarkov video. This time with a little bit of a commentary and looking forward to the future with my hopes and dreams for the next wipe and big patch for Tarkov that should, in theory, be dropping the day after this video releases. Like any Tarkov fan, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing new stuff in the game, to seeing it move forward, and to the inevitable wipe hype and excitement in the community for a fresh start. The thing about Tarkov is that it's built a big community of individual players who all have massively differing expectations for what we want to see, what should or should not change, how the game should feel or sound, how the economy works, how the meta, guns, quests, or skills work, and everything in between. Pick almost any topic surrounding Tarkov, ask five different people a question, and I'm willing to bet you get five different answers. Tarkov is a big game, and a lot of different sub-communities have all found something that really resonates with them inside of Tarkov, and that's pretty awesome. However, it also inevitably creates conflict and a clash of ideas around what makes Tarkov fun or engaging or intense. And unfortunately, a lot of times, what one part of the player base absolutely loves is the exact thing that another part of the community hates. And because we're all currently stuck playing essentially the same game mode or the same playlist, if you want to compare it to more traditional arena shooters, BSG is kind of forced into a really awkward situation where they can't really cater to the wildly differing expectations of several diverse groups of players at the same time without inevitably pissing off one group or the other. In this video, I don't intend to say that one group of players is any more right or wrong than the other. I just felt like laying out things that I hope for, things I really hope to see changed or added, and try my best to explain why I feel that way and why I think they'd improve the game overall. I honestly think that Tarkov needs all kinds of players to really stay alive, from the lowliest level 5 rat all the way up to the level 77 thick boy with three kappas in one wipe. Without the low level farmers, the economy stagnates. Big PvP players make the game look enticing to new people who see awesome clips, role players bring the game to a lot of niche communities, and the meme lords add a sense of light-hearted fun that the game just doesn't have without them. My personal enjoyment in Tarkov has always largely come from the game's focus on having a huge selection of equipment and weapons to make your own loadouts with from the ground up. It's really the first thing that hooked me, and I've always loved messing around with new builds and weighing the pros and cons of certain equipment choices. For a long time in Tarkov, it felt like your loadout could really be your loadout. Like it almost could express something about you and how you played the game. There was such a diverse range of extremely viable builds and equipment choices that it was just fun to play around with almost everything. This leads me to essentially my biggest gripe with the Tarkov 12.12 patch, the extremely stale gear meta, and the almost complete lack of diversity in the highest tier of builds and equipment, ammo selections, armor choices, and just stuff you wear on your character in general. Tarkov has something like 60 weapons currently, and close to 100 pieces of armor, helmets, rigs, and backpacks, but it feels like we're almost trapped into using certain items because they're just wildly better, much easier to acquire, or way more cost effective than anything else. And perhaps worst of all, there's tons of things in the game right now that check all of the above boxes, being better, easier to get, and cheaper than any comparable item. And yes, of course I'm talking about 762 BP ammo. There's no easy solution for this because it's a huge combo of factors. Everything from the new recoil system, damage formula, crafting restrictions, flea market restrictions, newly quest locked items, and changes to the trader supply have contributed to this. So all of those systems need some kind of updating to really tackle this issue in any more than a band-aid fix kind of way. The preamble here is a bit long winded, but essentially the number one thing I'm hoping to see in the new patch is some kind of diversification of the gear meta, including ammo, armor, and equipment like rigs and backpacks. I'd like to see an update to the ballistics and damage system so that 762 and higher calibers aren't just the default best choice all the time in every situation. I'd like to see attachment stat reworks so that players are encouraged to use more than 10% of the weapon parts in the game. I'd like to see movement penalties added to the biggest backpacks in the game so that players actually need to make a choice between carrying more loot and being able to move effectively and quickly. I'd like to see new updates to the recoil system from the 12.12 patch so that high fire rate weapons aren't just universally kind of bad. I'd like to see 9mm AP ammo actually be purchasable again so I can run the MPX and not be trapped into using leg meta ammo or waiting 8 hours to craft 150 rounds. I'd like to see updates to the traders and what they carry at levels 2 and 3 so that so many mid-tier parts aren't just arbitrarily locked to high levels because someone just decided to put them there, even though you can buy better pieces at level 15 for less money. 
Not all of this stuff can be done in one fell swoop, but at the very least, I'd love to see some progress made here. I'm just so tired of seeing carbon copy PMCs on every map, wearing the same gear with the same weapons, the same ammo, because it's all just legitimately the most effective stuff in the game if you have it unlocked and can afford it. Maybe I'm delusional, but it just seems like such a waste to have so many really well-designed pieces of equipment in Tarkov, and then have only a handful of those items actually be relevant because a lot of times there's no compelling reason to use anything but the biggest bag, the biggest rig, the chunkiest armor, and whatever happens to have easy access to AP ammo from traders. I think this is also extra relevant going into the upcoming patch, where at least two of the new weapons, the G36 and the AUG, are going to be 5.56 rifles, a caliber which has been relegated to essentially meme status because of the new recoil system and damage calculation formulas. There's tons of hype around both of these new weapons, and it would be a damn shame to see them just be used for the novelty for two weeks and then just shelved once we unlock 7.62 BP and M62. The next big thing I would like to see some kind of work on is PMC skills, something that once was a pretty divisive topic, but now it kind of seems like we've almost given up hope that they'll ever be any better, and just accepted that if you want to have fun in Tarkov, you need to grind certain skills for an untold amount of time, so you have an enormous advantage over everyone else who doesn't have the time or the patience to do the same thing. When you hit level 51 and unlock the elite skill bonus for several skills, namely strength, endurance, metabolism, perception, and search, you essentially negate the effect of certain negative mechanics on your character. Elite strength means weight doesn't really matter up to a certain point, making inertia basically not affect you most of the time. Elite Perception allows you to have budget radar hacks and just know where people are with enough game knowledge. Elite Metabolism makes energy and water loss not really matter to you anymore. Elite Search eliminates most of the risk of looting. Now maybe I'm just the old man yelling at the clouds here, but what is the point of even having inertia in a weight system if Elite Strength just negates those effects on certain players? Why should one player be able to hear another player from significantly farther away just because they have some more hours in the game? Why does one player need to desperately search for a bottle of water just to survive a woods raid, while another player can roll up on them while totally dehydrated and just kind of laugh at the poor little Timmy actually having to play the game and look for water in a crate? My core issue with the skills is that some of them just totally negate negative impacts of core game mechanics. Mechanics that ideally every single Tarkov player should have to interact with because those mechanics are what create depth and are basically the only thing left separating Tarkov from being just another generic modern shooter with some looting elements. I don't think anyone finds it fun to load up on shotgun shells or gas tanks every raid just to grind strength, and I'm willing to bet that most opposition to changing elite perks for skills does not come from any sense that it's actually good for the game as a whole, but more from a position of not wanting to lose an advantage that makes the game easier for some players and much harder for others. BSG has said many times that someday we will see skill reworks. Well, in my opinion, that someday needs to be now, because the skills in Tarkov are basically only useful for people with the time or the desire to go through a monotonous grind just to get a big in-game advantage over everyone else. The final thing that I would love to see some work done on is probably the hardest to actually counter, and that is exploitable mechanics that are sort of hardwired right into Tarkov itself. Most notably the right hand pixel peek and the ever present audio issues around multi-level buildings and staircases. On the topic of the right hand peek, I do sort of have faith that the new animations for moving and leaning that we've just recently seen will likely have some effects on this. Only time will tell on that front, but I would just love to see something targeted at this mechanic specifically. On the audio front, it's been discussed to death, and I don't really think there's a good argument that says things are fine the way they are. Everyone who plays Tarkov will die somewhat frequently due to how the audio works in the game, either because they didn't hear someone at all, or because they did hear someone, but can't actually make sense of where that sound came from. It's gotten to the point where we as players actually know how to abuse the arbitrary sound barriers to move on people without making any noise, or we know where we can sit to be able to hear everything going on while nobody can hear what we're doing. You can call it game sense if you want, but I personally prefer to call it abusing broken mechanics, and I think more than anything, our collective realization of how broken the audio system is this wipe has contributed to the sit and wait meta, because no Nobody wants to be the PMC who just died because audio doesn't work properly. Fixing this is going to be a big job, and there's no denying that. We shouldn't expect this to be something that can be fixed overnight or even in a week or a month of consistent work. But I also don't think there's any single mechanic in the game 
that would make the player base more happy to see improvements on than the audio system. Even outside of player sound, there's so much work to do on balancing sound effects like the airplane and the reserve alarms, fixing attenuation issues so we don't hear scabs from three miles away. It can be easy to look at audio as a secondary feature, but in a game like Tarkov, the audio is one of, if not the most important source of information that players have, and it can often make or break an encounter, much to the frustration of everyone involved. One final thing that I would put in this category for changes is kind of just a personal beef of mine, and honestly, I think one of my most controversial opinions about Tarkov, but I think it really is far past due for some changes to how painkilling drugs work in Tarkov. You can't use a bandage before you start bleeding, meaning that at least for a few seconds after you get hit, you're forced to react, weigh the decision of whether you bandage now, or stay in the fight and finish it off. Painkillers, on the other hand, have basically just become a consumable buff item, where the majority of their use comes before they're actually ever needed, and their effect provides a strictly positive bonus to your character, with very, very minor negative impact to just popping down pills or shooting up on drugs constantly. Personally, I think it's just silly that we can just munch on ibuprofen or Vaseline all raid so that when we get our legs shot out, it's like nothing happened. It really diminishes the impact of the injury system on any given fight, and turns an entire mechanic of the game into something that only negatively affects people who haven't played enough Tarkov to understand why they should just be on painkillers all the time. Yes, we have heard that the addiction mechanic will change this, but we have no idea when that will be a thing. Personally, I think it would just be such a simple change to force painkillers to have a kick-in time if you're already on them when you get shot, or to give negative effects like an accuracy penalty or blurry vision to players who are actively on painkillers without any pain to kill. Hate me for this suggestion if you want, but I think it would make this health system just a little more immersive. Well, that basically covers it for the top three big systemic changes that I think would make this upcoming patch the best one that Tarkov has ever seen. I know not everyone will agree with me, but that's kind of the beauty of Tarkov. It's different things to different people, and we have a pretty diverse community that all has their own hills that they're willing to die on. Some people want the game to be faster and more PvP focused, others want it to be slower and more immersive, and some just don't really care that much, they just want all the systems to be working as intended. What do you think? Am I way off base with these ideas? Let me know down in the comments, and I'll try to respond to as many as I can before the wipe hits. Thanks for checking out the video. I've got links to my Twitch stream, Discord server, and Patreon page down below for anyone interested. And until next time, stay safe in Tarkov City.